Stacy Cochran, and I'm here with Gabriel Gurley, author of A Conceptual Guide to Open Office 2.0. Gabriel, what exactly is Open Office? Open Office is a, an open source office productivity suite. Uh, for folks who aren't familiar with Open Office, it's very similar to Microsoft Office in terms of features and capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, open Office has um, five primary programs that's bundled into it. It has a word processor called Writer, mm -hmm. uh, which is very similar to WordPerfect or Microsoft Word. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a spreadsheet application um, that's called Calc, mm -hmm. and that program is very similar to Lotus 123 or um, mm -hmm. Microsoft Excel. It has a presentation program called Impress, mm -hmm. uh, and its counterpart with Microsoft is uh, PowerPoint, and finally, a uh, database program called Base, which is a actually a new program that's within uh, Open Office version two. Version one didn't have a database application mm. bundled with it. And finally, Open Office has a drawing program called Draw, in which you could design illustrations and bitmap images. Excellent. Now, who do you see as your audience for this guide? Well, this um, book that I have written uh, is primarily targeted towards mm -hmm. the ac academic market. Sure. Uh, and that could involve uh, school systems, whether it's curriculum or continuing education uh, divisions, um, homeschooling as well. A lot of the lessons um, that are in this book um, teach lifelong skills. So it's not just learning the software, but teach lifelong skills as well, mm. such as being able to write a resume, mm -hmm. uh, being able to create and interpret uh, a balance sheet, mm -hmm. uh, creating a cash flow statement, designing Excellent. brochures, uh, creating mailing lists with the database program. Mm -hmm. So it has a lot of practical applications for not only an academic environment, uh, but for homeschooling and even individuals as well who would like to to learn how to use a software package in a productive manner and learning skills that they can apply to it on a day-to-day -day basis. And the book has nine hands-on lessons, right? That's correct. Which, which one is one of your favorites? Um, I like them all. One of the uh, lessons that I keep uh, getting a lot of positive feedback on is the one concerning balance sheets. Uh, a lot of people, it's kind of maybe kind of a little dry mundane topic, mm -hmm. but uh, I have a lot of people get a, a lot of positive feedback. I go into walking them step by step using the Calc spreadsheet application mm -hmm. and creating a balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And when they get done with the balance sheet, I also spend a little bit of time in the book on how to and interpret the data that's within the balance sheet. So not only create one, but explain to them what the balance sheet is telling them mm -hmm. uh, in terms of sure. their assets, liabilities, their net worth, uh, what banks are looking for in a balance sheet. Say you're looking at going to buy a house. Mm -hmm. um, I explain enough in that balance sheet to let folks know what the bankers are So looking. a balance sheet would be, uh, take for instance, my, my wife and I, if we wanted to do our budget for the month, is that exactly what that's for? It, it, what a balance sheet does is give you a snapshot of where you're at financially mm -hmm. at that point in time. So a balance sheet uh, is divided in three sections. You've got your assets, which would outline how much cash you got in the bank. Mm -hmm. um, if you own a home, what the value of the home is. Your automobiles, uh, detail uh, how much the automobiles mm -hmm. are worth. Sure. Then your liabilities, then subtract out how much you owe. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, for example, a home, usually it, you don't own the home outright, you're making payments on mm -hmm. it. So the top, the assets will tell you how much the house is worth, the liabilities will tell you how much you owe on the house. And then your net worth is subtracting out basically your assets by your, your liabilities. Mm -hmm. If you have a positive net worth, that means you have more assets than you have liabilities. Um, so. That uh, lesson there breaks all of that down and gives you an explanation of how to be able to read and interpret that data and kind of give you an idea of what your financial position is. That's great. But we also, one of the lessons as well is a monthly household expense spreadsheet I go through. So if folks are trying to learn how to keep a uh, monthly record of their expenses, mm -hmm. showing you how to use a spreadsheet to be able to keep track of that. And all that information is, is here in the book, that's, the guides. That's correct. Walks you step by step on how to create those documents 
and how to be able to utilize. Very good. Let's talk a little bit about Lulu. Uh, how easy was it for you to publish through Lulu? I think Lulu is a great service. Um, you know, I look at more of it, Lulu, from a little different perspective. I don't look at it so much as a uh, publishing company as I do as a technology, as a means of being able to get the book published mm -hmm. and get it to uh, the readers who are interested in the title. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when I started off with Lulu, I first started off using Lulu as kind of a way of doing proof copies before I sent it to uh, actual commercial printers that may be offset printers or things like that because mm -hmm. Lulu gives you the capability of printing one or two copies at a time. You can mm -hmm. print as many copies as you want. If you want one or two copies, great. If you want 500 copies, you can do that. And so Lulu gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, their instructions were easy to read and use. And so I had no problem getting the book uh, using Lulu's instructions and getting it uh, to its final form. Excellent. So what advice would you give to writers who have just heard about Lulu and may be interested in publishing with Lulu? What advice would you give them? Um, advice I would give um, in terms of what I did with my book, uh, do a lot of research depending on your topic. Um, spend the time to really craft and um, uh, make it a, a good product that people would want to read. Um, mm -hmm. It's that's a lot of the mundane, the less exciting things about publishing a book, but uh, if you do that and take your time, it's just like an art. Uh, you know, you craft it, you mold it, you get it to where you think it's a really good, uh, useful publication, mm -hmm. and then uh, use Lulu uh, to get it published and and work on your public uh, publicizing and marketing it. Excellent. And so letting people know about it. Very good. And Gabriel, do you have a website you'd like to let folks know about? Sure, they can find out more information uh, about the book and also additional resources uh, that I publish online as well. Uh, that website is www.conciseconceptsinc.com. So that's www.concepts.com. -E 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 Excellent. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Okay, thank you for having me.